AV Stats. Hope you guys are having a great day. Um, today is Saturday for me, so I hope you all are outside playing and not doing stats. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to try, because I think a lot of 3-1, it should be a review. Um, so I'm going to try to go through two lessons in one. Um, if you get through it and you're like, oh my god, my brain just exploded, I don't understand what's happening, um, let me know in class um, so that I can go over more stuff. But I, I, I think that you'll find this not to be too bad. Um, so 3-1 uh, is, oh no, that's not right. Well, our so bad isn't right. Darn it. Okay, is that it? Where's our so bad? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so our so bad. Um, is knowing the basic properties of correlation, um, calculate and interpret, interpret correlation in context, and explain how correlation R is influenced by extreme observations. Um, and then, you know, we're just going to, like, also look at what a scatter plot is, um, define a few variables, um, and by the end of today, you should be able to describe scatter plots in a way that is um, statistically relevant. So I'm going to add those to our SUBAT. Okay, so a um, couple definitions, explanatory and response variable. So in if you had me in algebra, um, I probably talked to you about um, independent and dependent variables. Um, independent stands alone, and the dependent variable depends on the other one. Um, and so usually, not usually, like all the time, Independent goes on the x-axis, and your dependent goes on your y. Um, in stats, typically we call it the explanatory variable and the response var variable because typically we're looking for, is there some sort of um, explanation for whatever the response is that we're curious about? Um, so um, what is... So like, say for example, the response that you were curious about was lung cancer. And you're like, hmm, what's the variable that could explain people getting lung cancer? Perhaps it is smoking. And so you kind of like look at the correlation between your ex explanatory variable and your response variable. So um, if it helps, your explanatory variable has an X in it, and so it's on the X axis. It's a good way to think about it. So just as an FYI. So you can go ahead and write this down if you want. Um, there's also a textbook definition, but I don't know. This kind of makes sense in my brain. Next is the scatter plot. Um, hopefully, a scatter plot is the thing that is review for you. Um, a scatter plot basically just graphs two different variables against each other um, in a single point. Um, represents, you know, an X and a Y, an X and a Y coordinate, um, and, and well, I'll, I'll show you, but um, basically you're just plotting a relationship between two different variable, variables. All right, so for AP stats specifically um, on the test, if someone asks you to describe the relationship between two, two variables and they give you a scatter plot, um, or they ask you to describe a scatter plot, you need to include four things. Four things. Okay. And when it was a distribution of data, we had to remember to use our socks. Shape, outlier, center, and spread. But we're not describing a distribution of data. We are describing a relationship between two different variables. And so when you do that, you need four things. Four different things. DOFs. Okay, you have to include the direction. Is it positive or negative? Two, are there outliers? This is an example of a scatter plot. That is an outlier. Everybody else follows the trend. This person is just like, F you all, I'm gonna do whatever I want. Next is form and in this chapter, all that really matters is, does it look approximately linear or not linear? The one on the left is clearly not linear. There's some sort of periodic relationship there. 
Um, this one is linear. Uh, you see, it's kind of like a line. Um, there's an outlier, but it's kind of like a line. So you'd either have to say linear or not linear, approximately. Use the word approximately. Lastly is strength. Um, how strong is the relationship between the two variables? Is it weak? Is there no relationship? Is it moderate? Is it strong? Um, and we're going to talk about correlation um, and correlation coefficient, which will give you a more exact answer to that question. All right, so uh, below I give you a scatter plot um, of uh, GPA versus SAT score. So you notice that the SAT is on the x-axis, GPA is on the y. Um, probably be better to do it the other way, but you, know, you don't really have like a very clear explanatory and response variable in this case. So um, anyways, th there seems to be, if we were to describe this using DOS, right, there seems to be a um, positive, because it's going up as um, SAT scores increase, so does GPA. Positive, that's your direction. Form is approximately linear. Okay, you see as one variable goes up, so does the other. Um, and it's a moderately strong relationship. Um, and are there outliers? If you just kind of zoom in here, um, most of them are kind of like in the general trend of where everybody else is. Um, but like this person here has a really low, uh, really, well, you know, they have a, a pretty low SAT score and a really, really low GPA, um, which still follows the trend of low SAT scores and low, um, low GPAs, but it's kind of off the beaten path from everybody else. Um, so, yeah, um, this one's more kind of conceptually more like an outlier because um, that person has a really, really high GPA but has a really low SAT score. So that person probably either doesn't test well or they were sick or was having a rough day, something like that. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about outliers um, later once we do the line of best fit, but uh, at least squares regression line. Um, but anyways, so I just kind of wanted to show you if you make scatter plots, um, what are some of the possibilities that you're going to get? Um, and then we're going to actually come back to these graphs um, in just a second. So um, once I explain what R is. So this first scatter plot that I made has pretty much no relationship whatsoever. Notice with this next one, as one variable increases, the other one is actually decreasing. Um, so as you go along the x-axis, you're increasing in x but decreasing in y. Um, that would be a negative relationship. Um, and this one is a pretty weak relationship. This next one um, is a positive relationship. So this one was approximately linear, still approximately linear, uh, but it's a positive relationship because as x increases, so does y. Um, and it's a little bit stronger than this one. So notice that these are like this, it's more scattered. Um, these are much, not necessarily closer together, but they're closer to um, following the same trend. Um, so this one I would say is like a moderate to strong, positive, approximately linear relationship. Can you describe what these next two are? You got it. Strong, positive, approximately linear for the first. And the second one is because all of those dots are on the same line, um, it's a perfect linear negative relationship. All right, last little bit is the correlation coefficient, which in like every single text, okay, maybe not every single one because I haven't seen every single one, but like every single textbook that I've ever seen um, and any stats class I've ever taken is represented by a little tiny r. Um, not little tiny, but you know, lowercase. So anyways, <laughs> good talk. Um, so correlation coefficient um, is basically a number that is between negative one and positive one. Okay, if you get a correlation coefficient that is larger than one or less than negative one, then you have the wrong number. Um, but your correlation coefficient has to be between negative 1 and positive 1. It can equal negative 1 or positive 1 as well. Um, and it describes the strength 
and the direction of your scatter plot um, of the, the relationship between the two variables. Okay, so um, a negative one is a positive perfect, a perfect positive correlation. Zero, uh, if r is zero, that means there's like no relationship between the two things. And then a positive one would be positive perfect relationship. And then there's anything in between 0.98 would be a very, very strong correlation. Um, positive. Okay. Um, the other thing that you should know is that like you need to be able to interpret what positive means in context um, or negative and uh, what a positive or negative relationship means in context and basically all it means is that as one variable increases the other one increases if it's a positive relationship and as one increases, the other decreases um, for a negative relationship. Um, and so if you have context, like the SAT and ACT problem, or the SAT and uh, GPA problem, you would say something like, um, as SAT scores increase, so does GPA, um, to interpret in context. Okay, um, so uh, here's an example. We've got two graphs, right? Um, describe the relationship for each of the following two graphs. Um, so take a look, see if you can describe each of them. Inevitably, when I do this in class, um, I show them one at a time, uh, and because it's a little easier to compare them side by side. But uh, with the first one, um, the class typically um, thinks that it's a moderate positive relationship um, and then the second one is a strong positive relationship um, and that's actually not the case you know if you were to kind of zoom in um, on the one on the right you would get the exact same graph um, as the one on the left so um, basically what the whole point of this is that um, R would have been the same in both of these um, and so you kind of would have had less of like a, a visual um, you, sometimes your eyes lie to you you know so anyways the R kind of gives you uh, the correlation coefficient gives you a, a better estimate of the strength of the relationship um, okay so uh, we're gonna kind of give a you know a few fun facts about correlation coefficient um, a lot of these things you will need to know. Um, you don't necessarily have to like memorize them this instant, but at some point in the future, you know, after practicing a lot of problems um, and, and seeing the context of the correlation coefficient, you should kind of be able to figure these things out. Um, so the first thing that I want to show you actually is the equation to find R. Um, I will never make you actually uh, figure it out and like calculate it because your calculator surprise does everything for you um, but I just wanted to give it to you so you have it okay so this is the formula you do 1 over n minus 1 where n is the number of observations uh, the number of dots on your scatter plot um, and then times the sum of each individual x value minus its mean divided by the standard deviation of the x's times each individual y value minus the y mean divided by the standard deviation of y. Um, and so uh, a couple things come from this. One is that um, you are taking the units of x and dividing it by the units of x uh, and the units of y divided by the units of y um, and therefore um, it will have uh, no units. Um, it's just a scalar because you're you're canceling out your units. Um, and is between negative one and positive one indicates the dire direction and strength of linear relationship. We already talked about that. Um, and uh, it makes no distinction between explanatory and response variables. So if you were to flip your graph and put your x on your y axis, your r would remain the same. That's important. Um, r does not change when we change the units of x and y. Okay, so like if you were to multiply every x value by a number. Um, you wouldn't be changing. Uh, you wouldn't be changing the R value. Um, you could only do correlation for quantitative data, uh, measures the strength of a linear relationship, not curved, 
Um, it is strongly affected by outliers. Ask me about the ice.